Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Guy Barassa from Namaska Lithium. How are you today, Guy? Always a pleasure meeting with you. Guy, I want to start by congratulating you. You've won so many awards recently, uh, fastest moving stock on the OTCQX. You were the number two mining company on the TSX Venture. Uh, we had that your stock was up 166% on the OTCQX, and I read somewhere that your market capitalization was up over 200% last year. Can you tell us why, in these depressed market times last year, you fared better and defied gravity? Well, we were able to achieve this because we were reaching important milestones in the development of the company, mainly getting fully permitted for the Wabushi mine, uh, getting uh, Johnson Matthey to sign a uh, MOU with us for a $12 million purchase agreement of material to be produced in the future, uh, support from the Quebec government, and obviously we're involved in lithium. So we are one of the very few around the world that are fully permitted presently to start building and producing and entering this chain of, of supply in the next couple of years. So when people start realizing, when you compare with less advanced exploration projects, what we have in our portfolio, 100% ownership of the second largest and richest deposit of spodumene in the world, uh, second only to Thaleson, uh, and I insist on reserves. People brag about resource, potential resource. I'm talking about reserve that's economically proven. So uh, second richest, second largest, we've developed our own process of making lithium hydroxide, lithium carbonate, our purity at the lowest possible cost and the greenest way of making it. I have so many questions to ask you. So let me just jump in here. I think I read in one of your answers as well, the lithium salts required for lithium batteries is one of the reasons why lithium has taken off in the last little while. Is that what you think is the primary catalyst for the demand for lithium, uh, lithium prices? Yes, of, of course. The, um, there is an interesting normal growth for all industrial known traditional applications for the different lithium compounds. <clears throat> but in the past five, six years, we've seen a very big increase in demand from batteries, all type of batteries, rechargeable batteries, obviously for EV, hybrids, um, larger energy storage, obviously consumer device. And that I think was not really properly assessed by the actual suppliers and producers. So there is currently a shortage in supply. There is not enough lithium uh, of battery grade quality that is available out there for the fast growing demand. So obviously this reflects on the price, spot price. Spot price have almost tripled in the past uh, six months for lithium carbonate in China. So obviously it reflects everywhere. So a uh, very good place to be presently in the lithium space. Okay, and, and speaking of grade, you have a, an extraction process from uh, the spodumen that makes you very competitive. You talk to us a little bit more about that. Absolutely. We, uh, traditional way of making lithium hydroxide is further transforming or reprocessing lithium carbonate. That's a long, lengthy, costly process, a lot of impurities to be removed, and that's the traditional way of making it. When we try to see how we could enter the chain of supply and be competitive compared to the brines, compared to the Chinese uh, conversion capacity, uh, competing with the Australian spodumene source. We found out that the best approach was to use hydroelectricity, affordable, available and reliable in Quebec, long-term supply agreement. So by deciding to use electricity, hydroelectricity as your main reagent, you are lowering the cost of your lithium compounds, but you're also making sure that it is the purest quality available out there at the cheapest cost. So we developed that process. We're very proud and we're gonna be, I believe, a game changer in the lithium compound world. And speaking of game changer for the Investor Intel audience, you may not be aware of the fact that she received the largest grant to date from the Sustainable Development Technology uh, yeah. Canada, SDTC, for like almost $13 million. Correct, correct. We, we decided that at some point, while we were working on the permitting process, lengthy and dull permitting process, 
that uh, we could take advantage of that slow period and concentrate on making a commercial size representative plant to engage client with uh, commercial size samples produced from commercial equipment similar to what's going to be in the large plant in, in order to qualify the product and increase the number of sales we could do before entering commercial production. So we uh, asked SDTC, Sustainable Development Technology Canada, uh, financial assistance. This is not a, um, a pallet uh, test, this is not a technology uh, R&D uh, subsidy or financial assistance. SDTC is the pre-commercialization L financial help by the federal government wants to make sure that green technologies developed in Canada are sold and are available. So they provided about 32% of the overall budget that we needed to start building and commercializing our technology and the end products that come with it, the iPurity Lechem compounds. Okay, well, based on this processing facility, I just want to ask you, uh, will you be, can you actually use this technology for other companies as well, or are you just planning on making this exclusive to Namaska? It could be used uh, on any other lithium source, uh, be it a chloride, be it a, uh, another uh, spodumene deposit elsewhere in the world. One aspect, though, of its advantage being in Quebec is the fact that it needs a lot of electricity and the long-term supply agreement of electricity in the, the long-term contracts in Quebec makes it more interesting to uh, use it here. But our, it could be used everywhere. It's a cost analysis of the impact on the cost of electricity. But the best place to do the transformation is in Quebec. I'm sure that the Quebec government will welcome anybody that sends its spodumin concentrate to be transformed in Shawinigan, Quebec. So further to the processing facility, personally, I thought one of the most substantial pieces of news out of Namaska in the last several months was your deal with Johnson Matthew. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, Johnson Matthew, we announced in uh, November of 2015, signing of a memorandum of understanding for a something that has never been seen in the lithium industry, certainly not with a junior company, which is not yet in production, uh, a $12 million purchase order if you want to summarize it, paid in advance. So it's not a potential conditional offtake agreement of some sort. It's a firm purchase order for lithium hydroxide and services to be provided by the phase one plant, paid in advance. So $12 million worth of hydroxide and services from a plant that does not even exist yet is going to be built during 2016. So obviously that uh, we are in the final process of the final drafting of the agreements, all of the detailed final agreements on this, technical, legal, due diligence, business points are all completed. So we do expect that in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be able to formally confirm that the 12 million has been received. It's going to launch officially the construction of the phase one plant. But in the meantime, we were able, because we signed the MOU with Johnson Matty, we were able to trigger the first tranche of the SDTC grant. So that allowed us to pay the long lead items, deposits, start the engineering work, detailed engineering work, so that we still do believe that by the end of 2016, we will be able to start commissioning that phase one plant. Well, Guy, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Like usual, when I come in Toronto, I'll gladly meet with you.